What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 1 of my Eastside Hockey Manager Early Access Let's Play. Hopefully you guys are good. Today we're going to start playing this game. So if you watched the first episode, episode 0 as I called it, I asked for your suggestions. I have now picked a team to be. We are going to be using the Blue Line rosters update of course. Version 7.3 is the current version as I record this. If you want to have more info on that, you are able to get that. Uh, all the information for this series will be down in the description. So. Uh, yeah, if you didn't watch that first episode, definitely go watch it. Today, we start our adventure, the, the American dream, the North American dream, as we are going to be starting as a NHL uh, general manager. So this is going to be fun. Uh, if you can't be bothered to watch for the first episode, just kind of to explain, this is new to me. I'm going to be learning as I go. I have no doubts that during this series, I'm going to say stuff that doesn't make sense or say stuff that's wrong or have questions that I pose to you guys watching. And I'd really, really, really appreciate it if you are someone who knows a lot about hockey. Get involved. Get involved in the comments if you've got advice for me, players I should waiver, players I should try and trade for, that kind of stuff. It's going to be a great use to me because my knowledge of the NHL is extremely limited. Um... And this is a learning experience. So the team that I'm actually going to be here, I already tweeted about the fact that I'm going to be taking over them. I should also point out the fact that um, if you're not already, you should follow me on Twitter because I will no doubt post the odd question on there too as I encounter stuff during my EHM kind of, uh, I guess, adventure that this is. So maybe this isn't going to take too long to set up here because you guys are on edge. You want to know who I'm going to be taking over. So a bit about the team I'm taking over. The reason that I've picked them is because they were one that was suggested in the comments of the last episode, episode zero. I did, of course, ask for your suggestions. There were a few that were also suggested, which I considered, those being the Canadians and also uh, the Sabres. They were the two franchises which were kind of uh, recommended second and third most I guess and the two that were certainly on the shortlist now if you're a Canadians fan you're probably gonna be a little bit upset with now who I'm gonna be having said that I considered being you because I'm gonna be taking over the Leafs and people are gonna be wondering why the Leafs well I asked on t obviously last episode for you to explain a little bit about the team and the Leafs um well as you'll know if you follow the NHL they uh, the second most successful team in NHL history, with the second highest amount of Stanley Cups won behind the Canadians, their Canadian rivals. Um, but they've not won it in 47 years, which is the longest dry spell for a previous Stanley Cup winner. Which kind of appeals to me, that idea of trying to get a team back on its feet that has some history. Uh, I can see some parallels there between the Toronto Maple Leafs and Liverpool, who are the football team that I support in the English Premier League. So... They kind of appeal to me. Not only that, but they are one of the original six, that being one of the first franchises and one of the oldest franchises in the NHL. And additionally, they're also one of the wealthiest teams in terms of their owners who also own Toronto FC and MLS. So that's why we're going to be them a little bit behind it. I hope that you guys who suggested other teams are still going to get behind this series. If you're a Canadians fan, watch even if you're not happy about this. And the reason I say that is because I'm probably going to be ruining your rivals anyway. I'm going to try not to, but you can give me false advice, I guess, in the comments and try and throw me off if, if that's your thing. So, this episode I'm going to talk a little bit about my understanding of the game. We're going to learn a bit about my roster, who we've got and kind of take things from there. So, if you've never seen Eastside Hockey Manager, this is going to be a good introduction for you guys. Um, this first episode, we're probably not going to play any games. I need to kind of work out a format for this. If you don't know, the NHL season is over 82 uh, games played between October and April, uh, and then it goes into a playoff format. There are two conferences, that being the uh, Eastern and Western Conferences. And within these, there are four divisions with each getting three playoff spots. I believe there's also two um, additional spots in the playoff given. I can't remember if it's per conference or per, per division. So there's the first thing that I need someone to clarify for me. So um, I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about little rules like that just because I appreciate the fact that there's going to be people who watch this video who, like myself, have a very limited, if not worse, knowledge of the NHL than me. So anyway, let's have a look at our inbox here. So we've been welcomed to the Leafs. They were founded in 1917. They play at the Air Canada Centre in Toronto. Uh, they have a capacity of almost 19,000. Our main rivals are the Senators, the Canadians and the Sabres. So 
all the teams that I was weighing up potentially being. Also worth noting that I did watch the Leafs game yesterday against the Senators, and that was the first ever NHL game I watched from start to finish live, which I watched a lot of games on YouTube and stuff to learn more about the tactic side of things as I started getting into this and trying to learn it for this Let's Play. But that's the first game I've watched in full. It was an incredible one. Went to overtime. The Leafs getting the W for free on the night. Anyway, let's look at this. So the board looking forward to the playoffs. Well, the, the bar has been set very high already. We should look at it here. We've won 13 Stanley Cup titles. Last one being in 1967. So as I mentioned, a long-term without a draft uh, without a draft <laughs> without success i don't know where i was going with that we need a trophy and that's the aim here so we've got a little bit about who we've got to help us our star players are phil kessel so if you're a football manager fan this will look vaguely familiar but here we have all the attributes um i think i know most of these actually physicals are the same as in football manager which is my game that i play they're all fairly self-explanatory in terms of the mentals again fairly obvious i'd like to think in terms of this stuff stick handling i believe is a player's general ability on the puck slap shot and wrist shot are just two different techniques of shooting positioning is a defensive stat to do with how your defensive men uh, will play uh, poke checking is to do with putting in a tackle with the sticks, trying to get possession map passing, obvious, off the puck, player's movement off the ball in the attacking uh, third, hitting, how hard you hit someone when you go into them, face-offs, obviously face-offs in hockey are pretty common, deking I believe is to do with faking one way and going the other, trying to like throw the defender off. Deflections is to do with how well the player does at getting in front of the puck as it's going towards their own goal, and checking oh, i honestly have no idea so there's another bit i mean if i if i say anything here that's incorrect correct me because i'm learning anyway he can play right wing for us i will talk a little bit about the basics of hockey tactics to my knowledge which is extremely limited uh, in just a second but other key players we have is oh gosh we'll call you dian dion even uh Thaniof. I'm terrible with names. If this is the first video you're watching of mine, you're about to start bashing your head against a table, and I'm sorry for it. The other player we have is Jonathan Bernier, I guess. Uh, he looks quite good. He's a goalkeeper from what I can tell. He is. Uh, or a goaltender, I should say. Again, football terminology slipping out. That's not going to be the first or the last time. I'm apologising now for all future incidents of that. Anyway, uh, hot prospects. We've got Andreas Johnson, who is currently playing abroad apparently he's swedish it looks like a swedish team he might be at but he can play left wing we also have anton bibio uh 20 years old playing for the marlies which i believe is kind of a junior team to the um the leafs i'm sure someone again correct me if i'm wrong and our last player here is leipzig who is another young canadian talent and this guy can play center for us so, the fans are disappointed by my appointment. Excellent. That is exactly what I wanted to hear. In terms of our schedule, we start with the Canadians at home. No pressure. First game that we're going to be playing. It's going to be dropped right in at the deep end. That will be coming up in a few episodes time, I guess. So, yeah, there's our fixtures. I guess the first thing we should do is look at our team. So... Here is the roster. So, a little, kind of the very, very basic for people who have no clue about ice hockey. It's a 6v6 sport. You have a goalkeeper, uh, a left defensive man and a right defensive man, a left winger and a right winger, and a centre. So uh, I guess if we just look at the tactics here, and I think there's a little graphic which will probably help just to illustrate the point. So you'll have your goaltender, left defenseman, right defenseman, your right winger and your left winger, and your centre. Kind of your centre traditionally kind of is your best player because he's going to be the focal point of a lot of the play a lot of the time he's going to be the kind of guy who has to kind of be available for the pass and find i guess space in the most crowded area of the ice so anyway i guess the first thing to do is set our lines so the best way to do this that i found especially when i'm starting with this game is to just have everyone selected even if you go over your kind of team limit and the maximum players allowed on your roster which we can refine at a later date and just get my assistant to give us the kind of the lowdown on who he thinks should play where generally i find this to be the best kind of reflection of how good kind of i guess your team are and also to get appropriate roster kind of 
uh, I guess, choices. The other thing that's worth doing here, if we have a look, we can look at our team report. So we already had a look at some of our players. So you'll see a few familiar names here, but here we can see a kind of full overview of our team. So Bernier in um, goaltender is our best goaltender. A very good player, but we need to start that contract if we can. Our best defenseman is uh, Dion Fanouf, who you can see here. He has 18 hitting. He's a bit of a train. Um, I talked about him earlier, obviously, because he was drawn to our attention. If you want to go on YouTube and look at montages of him hitting people, it's one of the most oddly satisfying things I've ever seen. So he is going to be a tank for us, I'm sure. We also have uh, Gardiner uh, here, Jake. He's well-rounded off. I wouldn't say he's a master of kind of defense in terms of as a defenseman but you can see here what he can do uh, and he can play a few different positions so maybe we can train him to play left defense and that might be of use as kind of uh, making him a bit more flexible but a good well-rounded player in terms of left wingers we have James Van Rijmsdijk uh, here young US national good passing good wrist shot um, doesn't have standout physicals but he's got some pretty solid acceleration and speed so he's going to be our first choice left winger, I think. We also have uh, Joffrey Lepul here, who is slightly older. Not the fastest on the ice, but he has some well-rounded technique and he's got some good mentals. At centre, Tyler Bozak is going to be our first choice here. One of our best players when it comes to face-offs. Also has some pretty nice passing. Good stamina, which is kind of useful. means that we can keep him out on the ice for a lot of uh, the play and he's not going to get worn down too quick. We also have here Kadri, uh, who's very young, a very young centre, a player who I'd like to give a bit of play to. I don't really know how good he can become. I'd be interested if you guys can tell me a bit more about him, who know a lot about him. What we can do is we can request a coach report here. And um, he has established credentials as a member of the team, despite his young age. So no mention of his potential. So let me know. But he looks pretty solid, well-rounded. He doesn't have any standout attributes, but he can still improve and then on the right wing we have Phil Kessel who's kind of the main man I guess in this entire team already talked about him he's going to be a beast for us and we also have Horton here who's a, a little bit older uh, good strength this guy uh, no incredible pace we have a good goaltender and I'm a little bit worried about everywhere else really but may maybe that's me maybe I'm completely wrong I'm not the person to judge Anyway, if we look at our top prospects, we've already looked at a few of these, but we have Nylander here, who's at the Marlies, uh, Stuart Percy, who is also at the Marlies, and then uh, Andreas Johnson, who we've already talked about. It might be Hansen, or I don't know. He's Swedish, so I don't, it could be different. Who knows? Answers on a postcard. I feel like we should keep track of the number of postcards requested by me during the series, because it's going to be far too many as we go through this. So that's a little bit about the team and who we have. If we look at the lines that are kind of have been picked, and I'll just explain this in brief. So, uh, forward line is your best attacking players in terms of your best forwards, your first line here. Second line is kind of your second best players going forward. Third line is generally a team and lineup that will go on when you're maybe a little bit tired when you, your first few players are trying to get your Gatorade out and they might be slightly better defensively and good at kind of, I guess, shooting up shop. And your fourth line is kind of, they're just the, the line you go out when everyone else is absolutely dead and just needs to get their energy back. So that's that. In terms of goalies, it's self-explanatory. You have your first choice and your benched goalie. And then power plays, if you don't know about ice hockey, I, I mentioned that I'll probably put a video in the description with the very, very basics. But power plays is when you have the man advantage. Uh, so in a five on four, this is who will play. We have the five on three power plays, which is if they have two players in the sin bin. And on the flip side, um, obviously penalty kills are when you're down a man and you know you have a few less men so when you've only got the four players besides the goaltender on the ice I should stress and also the three on five and then obviously if both teams have one player in the the sim bin then you've got your even strengths in terms of the tactics I'm still learning this the general team options such as these I, I don't know what they mean so if anyone has any useful guides for forward usage and stuff, please leave them because I'm learning. I'm learning. These are a little bit more obvious for me, tactical settings, and I have looked into these a little bit more. So you can select instructions for specific lines, which is what I'd recommend. But I'm just going to show off these quickly. So you have your mentality, so how defensive or offensive you want to be. 
Uh, you've got your aggressiveness, so do you want to take things easy or do you want to be a kind of slightly more berserk team? <laughs> um, back checking, I don't know what that means. It'd be really nice if in the full game, I appreciate this game's in early access, but if there were tooltips, so when you ha hover over stuff like this, you can see a little bit more about what all these options are. I definitely think that would help a lot of newer players coming in. Gap control is to do with... Um, well, at least I assume it's to do with how well your players maintain gaps. So, in hockey, generally, you have the option to go tight and be within a stick's length of the offensive player when you're not in possession and he has the puck. Or you can sit off them a little bit more. So, if you sit off the player a little bit more, obviously, you give them more room to manoeuvre in. If you, but, at the same time, you're kind of able to cover your goal a little bit better. But if you go too tight to a player, you limit their space and their options kind of in terms of going inside and can often force them wide. But that does come at the cost of perhaps selling your position and also opening up opportunities out wide for a shot. So I believe gap control is how disciplined your players are when it comes to making sure they're maintaining a correct gap. Puck pressure, it, it's one of the few that actually explains itself. As is hitting, how hard you hit people. Are you going to be a team of brutes on the ice who kind of really try to intimidate players to gain a, a momentum and gain advantage, or are you going to kind of take it easy? Tempo, how fast you play when you're in possession of the puck. Passing, do you want to play it safe or try more adventurous passing? Again, this is why I'd recommend to have it, setting it up so you do it by units, because obviously your first choice and your first set of forwards are more likely to be better creatively and have better passing so it could be more beneficial to have them on um kind of creative passing whereas if you're playing with players you don't have the best passing ability safer passing is probably the way to go you then got shooting which is just the frequency of shooting and dumping the puck uh from what i've researched and what i gather is to do with um when the puck is kind of uh, hit forward from the neutral zone just to, towards the um, opposition's kind of defensive third uh, for you to then try and kind of use your pace I guess to gain an advantage there. In terms of the tactical systems I again I don't have the best knowledge of these the one that I do know is the def neutral zone defense so when you don't have possession of the puck and you're in your own kind of well when you're in the neutral zone how are you going to set up kind of shape wise I've actually had quite a lot of success with the 2-1-2 uh, but that is just me and then obviously you've got this little useful graphic which shows offensive and defensive positioning that you can see here and you can have it so it shows the movement so I'm going to quickly I think do the individual um unit instructions what we can do is we can set some basics here which is what we'll do uh, for a lot of these i'm going to keep them on normal to begin with i'd be interested to know you guys who are ehm veterans do you recommend that i look into team reports a lot more and then adapt my tactics game on game in football manager there's a thing called tactical familiarity which is how familiar players are with the system that you're playing um so I don't know if that's a factor here there isn't any sign that it's a factor but maybe it isn't it just isn't that obvious let me know because that would help me out. So we'll put on the unit options. I'm going to quickly set up my unit kind of tactics here. So you can see that we have general info about our unit. You can see the lineup here. Um, so this is a good offensive lineup. Four out of five stars. Good speed and good skill. So we're going to play offensive. Not so aggressive. Back checking. I don't know what it is. So I'm just going to leave it on normal for now. Same with gap control. Puck pressure I'm going to put on normal. Hitting I'm actually going to put on easy with a higher tempo. And I'm also going to put on more creative passing. And I'm going to put on barrage shooting. I've read a lot about older EHNs and people seem to think that barrage is just the way to go. So that is what we're going to stick with. In terms of everything else, I'm going to keep these on default except from the shift length, which I'm going to set at 40 seconds. I'm then going to quickly set up our second line, which as I mentioned is kind of your second offensive line. You can actually see our first and second lines are actually quite skilled in terms of um, they're quite similar in terms of how good they are, which is kind of nice. So I think we're going to set up ourselves fairly similarly. If I can quickly play spot the difference with myself. So, um, yeah, we'll go with that. Third line, we're, we're struggling a little bit more. We're actually quite good defensively here, but we have the skill of a potato. So we're going to put on safer passing, uh, barrage shooting. I'm actually going to put on a little bit more dumping because we haven't got the best at offense. We're going to set up defensively. Um, maybe a little bit more, in fact, no, let's not play more aggressive, but let's uh, apply more pressure on the puck. Higher tempo, or rather, rather higher and heavier pressure. We will go with higher tempo, but safer passing as well. And then last but not least, I'm going to do the rest of these lines off, because 
you guys don't want to see all this stuff. If there's anything that I do here that just doesn't make sense, uh, write it in the comments. Let me know because I'm not going to notice it otherwise. And here, this is our energy line, so we'll just put it on pretty much default for everything. Higher puck pressure, shorter shifts. Um, yeah, they're going to play at a much higher tempo, but a lot more safer passing, more dumping. Barrage shooting, we'll go with that for now. Um, but yeah, get, get your feedback on what you've just seen down below. We can also set personal instructions here. This is quite good if you've got particularly good players. And I've had quite a lot of success when it comes to setting this for specific players who are kind of your, your franchise men, the, the men who are just kind of your strongest players on the ice. For example, we can set Kessel here and we can give him um, kind of stuff that he should look to do. So I'm actually going to change his shooting bias slightly higher because he's got one of the best wrist shots and slap shots in our team despite his good passing and creativity. Maybe that's a mistake. Uh, we'll put him on more offensive too. And I also want him to be as creative as possible when we're playing, but also have heavier shooting. And while we're at it, let's just put his dumping as low as possible. You can also select different instructions for different situations. So, for example, on power plays, you could set these. Anyway, that's going to wrap up this team introduction. I don't want to go into too much detail with this episode. I appreciate this has been a slightly longer one. I think next episode we're going to look at our scouting and looking at how we can bring in some players. So if you've got suggestions for players that I should look at down below, let me know. If you've got any suggestions for how I should go about scouting teams, I'm aware if we just quickly go to the search screen, if I can find it, it's here and click through the tutorial Shazam, uh, we can actually set our scout, scout specific assignments, which if you've got suggested assignments that I should do, let me know. But anyway, uh, that's going to wrap things up from me. Hopefully you have enjoyed this first episode, a brief introduction. If you want to help me out, like the video, and also let me know what I need to know. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of it. If you've got alternatives to answers on a postcard, which is kind of my little catchphrase, let me know. Maybe, I don't know, messages on a voicemail. That's terrible. Yeah, I'm sure you can do better. Anyway, uh, guys, thank you for watching. Hopefully you have enjoyed. Leave your suggestions to the players I need to sign down below. Like the video if you enjoyed. And other than that, if you're new around here, subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. It is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.